Hello and welcome to day seven of seven days of Halloween. Hi everyone, it's Monica from Taylor Made Cards for You, and welcome back to my last day of my seven days of Halloween series. Today we're going to be creating a spooky wood scene using one of my new stamps from Viva Las Vegas. This is a stamp set that I actually won in a giveaway, so I was pretty excited to try out their stamps. They have some awesome stamps and I'm sure this probably won't be the last time I'll be showcasing some of their stamps in my videos. We're also going to be working with some Distress inks and Distress Oxides today. The Distress inks that we're going to be working with is Aged Mahogany and then I'm going to be working with Black Soot and then the Distress Oxide is Wilted Violet. Now this is actually a new technique for me. I had seen a picture of a wooded scene um, on Pinterest, so I thought I would give it a try. Now our background is going to have a big moon. So I took one of my circle die cuts to cut out a circle uh, to mask over my white cardstock. Now what's new for me for this technique is the color combination. I've created moon backgrounds um, before, but never with this color combination. Now there's a couple of ways that you can add your Distress ink to your white cardstock. You can certainly use one of your blending tools like I'm doing now, um, but you're going to want to make sure that you do it uh, slowly and surely. When you're using your Distress inks, you don't want to have harsh lines, so you're going to have to just come in and um, add the color slowly. Now another way that you can also add your color is using a brayer. And this will go a little bit faster for you, but you may get some harsh lines along the way. Now because I was going for a wooded background, um, I was alright with some of the um, harsh lines. In fact, I thought it really added to the background. Um, it's just a preference. But by using a brayer, you'll be able to add your color a lot more quickly. A brayer is also a great tool to use when you're layering your colors. Now if you've never used a brayer before, when you're adding the ink to your tool, you want to roll it forward. You don't want to go back and forth because then you're going to only get the ink on uh, one portion of the brayer. You want to have the ink cover the brayer completely. So when you're adding the ink, just roll the brayer forward or backward, but you want to keep a continuous motion. So the next layer that we're going to be adding is the Distress Oxide Wilted Violet. Now for your second layer, I wouldn't recommend using the brayer because we're going to want to have portion, uh, portions of that first ink to show through. And if you use the brayer, it may just completely cover your first layer and that's not really what we want. I went uh, back and forth between all three colors until I actually got the look that I wanted. So you're just going to need to play with it a little bit until you get the desired look. But as you see when I start adding these layers, you're going to see how it's turning into a black um, wooded scene. And the black soot is really what kind of frames it all. Um, so you're going to want to be uh, very generous with that part. So once you're happy with your color combination and your background, you're going to go ahead and remove your post-it note to reveal your moon. This is always my favorite part because that just looks so bright against those distressed colors. And then you're going to take a baby wipe and just drag some of that color um, across your moon. Now if you don't have a baby wipe, you could probably use just a damp paper towel but because your oxides will react to moisture, um, anything somewhat moist will work. 
Uh, but what you're doing is you're dragging some of that color across your moon to make it look a little bit hazy. And then when you're happy with the overall look, go ahead and take your heating tool to dry your ink to set it into your cardstock. All right, so once you're happy with the background, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Misty and my wooded scene stamp to add to my card. The black ink that I'm using is black archival ink and I'm, I'm adding lots of ink because it is a silhouette stamp. Now I want my silhouette images to be nice and dark. So I am gonna add a couple of layers of ink just to make sure I get it nice and crisp. All right, so once I was happy with my stamped image, I did bring out my distressing tool to fray up my edges. If you've been watching all of the videos this week, you know that this is a staple on my cards. I just really like the rough look that it gives to my vintage cards, um, and I think it really does add a finishing touch. Now, I don't necessarily like to have the white showing, so I will usually um, add some black soot distress paint, or in this case, I'm using black soot distress crayon. Both of them work pretty well, but with the distress crayon, your fingers are gonna get a little bit dirty. Now you probably noticed when I was adding my um, distress ink to my white card stock, I didn't necessarily put full coverage on the bottom portion of my card. And I did that intentionally because I knew that I was gonna add a piece of um, black cardstock. I used a burlap embossing folder to give the black cardstock some texture before I added it to the card. Now once I was finished with my scene, I decided to add a couple of bats to the background. To me, bats or witches on a, a big full moon is just a must. So I had to add just a little something extra. There was no way that a witch on a broomstick would be able to be seen through all those uh, tree branches. So I decided it had to be bats. And once all the stamping was finished, it was time to add my sentiment. Now you may have wondered why I added that black uh, piece of cardstock on the bottom, and this is exactly why. I wanted my sentiment to stand out, and I felt it may have gotten lost on that purple background, um, but on a black background, it was sure to stand out. Typically when I'm putting a card together, I do have some sort of direction I know that I'm headed. Um, it's just, may take a minute for you to catch up and realize where I'm going with it. You probably could have gone either way with this card. You didn't necessarily have to add that black texture on the bottom, but I felt that it really finished off the card and it did somewhat ground it as well. These clipping stickers are from the Tim Holtz collection. And what's really fun about these is you can use them individually or you can put a little phrase together. For this particular one, uh, the phrase that I ended up using is, in these very woods, there was a terrible silence. And I thought it was just perfect for the background. So this does complete my seventh card in my seven days of Halloween. I will be doing a drawing in about a week and I'll be giving away two prizes. The first prize is gonna be um, going to one person where they're gonna get all seven cards that I made this week. And then the second prize will be a little care packet that I'll be putting together with some of the knickknacks that I use to create some of these cards. I really hope that you've enjoyed my series this week and some of the cards that I've created. 
So as always, I will leave a list of all the products that I've used to create this particular card, along with the links to the stores. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And if you want to be entered into the drawing, don't forget, you have to be a subscriber to my channel and you have to uh, leave a comment on all seven videos. Thanks everyone for stopping by and I hope that, again that you've enjoyed the series. We'll see you again next time.